Hi, today we are going to dive into an incredibly useful topic, creating a professional data entry form in Excel. This tutorial is perfect for anyone looking to streamline their data collection process with a form that includes checkboxes, drop-down lists, and conditional messages. And the best part, we will have everything automated so that with a single click, your data is transferred to another tab. Let's get started. All right. The first thing we need to do is design a data entry form. Imagine we are organizing a community survey and we have the need to collect participant details. Here's how we will set it up. With my new Excel workbook open, I will rename the first sheet to survey form. In this sheet, we will have fields for participant information. Let's make our form look professional. Merge the cells from B1 to C1 to create a single cell for the title. Have it filled with a dark blue color, but feel free to choose any color you like. Change the text color to white for better visibility. In this meshed cell, I will type community survey form. This will be her form title. Have that formatted a bit. I'll make it bold. Have the height of the row increased a bit and have it aligned to the middle. Now, we need to label our fields. In column B, starting from B3, type the following labels. The name, age, gender, preferred contact method, and feedback. Skip a row after each label for a cleaner look. For example, I would have name typed in B3, age in B5, gender in B7, preferred contact method in B9, and feedback in B11. In column C, create the corresponding input fields, also skipping rows. For text entries like name and age, just leave the cells blank for now. This will be the cells where users will input their data. So we're going to make these entry cells more noticeable by filling them with a light color. So select cell C3, press the control button on your keyboard and select C5, C7, C9 and C11. Go to the home tab. Click on the fill color icon and choose any light color you prefer. I will also put a thick border around it to make it stand out. To make the form look cleaner, we will hide the columns that are not used. So select column E and press Ctrl Shift plus the right arrow key on your keyboard to select all the unused rows to the right. Right click and select hide. I will do the same for the rows. So select row 19 for instance, press Ctrl Shift plus the down arrow key to select all the unused rows down, right click and hide. This will make your form look more focused and professional. For the gender field, let's add a drop down list. So select cell C7 where gender will be entered, go to the data tab, click on data validation, then data validation again from the drop down menu. In the data validation dialog box, select list from the allow drop down menu. And in the source field, we are going to type male, female, and order. All separated with a comma sign. Then click OK to create the drop down list. Now, when you click on cell C7, you should see a drop down arrow that allows you to select male, female, or other. Next, Let's add checkboxes for the preferred contact method in a single cell. Go to the developer tab. If the developer tab is not visible for you, right click on the ribbon, select customize the ribbon and have the checkbox for developer checked. So going back to the developer tab, click insert, then choose the checkbox option under form controls. On the cell where you want the first checkbox, Let's say cell C9, draw the checkbox and label this checkbox email. Let's add another checkbox in the same cell. So simply click on this first checkbox, copy it and have it pasted right beside it. We would have this checkbox labeled phone. 
check boxes require a bit more setup to have it linked to the data sheet. Here is how you do it. Right click on the email checkbox, select format control. In the format control dialog box, under the control tab, enter the reference for any unused cell in the cell link field. So any unused cell where you would like to store the checkbox value, e.g. D9, and click OK. Repeat the process for the phone checkbox by linking it to another unused cell, say D10. Now, if you select any of the checkboxes, you would have a value shown on those unused cell. Whenever you make a selection for email, you have the true value shown. And if it's deselected, it changes to false. The same goes for phone. Now, let's use the formula to combine these values from the helper cells into a single cell. For example, in C9, I will use this if statement to combine the values. This formula will output email, phone, or both email and phone based on the selection. So enter that. Let's see how that works. So if I move these checkboxes around and make a selection for email, you see that we have email shown in the cell. This is the same way it's going to show in a data report that will be created later. So if I uncheck that and select phone, we'll have phone shown. And if both checkboxes are selected, we have both email and phone shown. So, but these values are not relevant on this form. It's not going to be useful for the user. You might want to hide it to make the form look neater. So I would have their text colors changed to the fill of the cell. And have this changed to white to blend with the cell's fill. And now you can move this back to its position. We want to prompt users to provide feedback if they haven't already. So below the feedback field, let's say cell C12, we will add a conditional message. So in cell C12, I would enter this formula. Where C11 is the reference cell for the feedback field. This formula works as follows. It checks if cell C11 is empty. If C11 is empty, it displays the message, please provide your feedback. And if C11 is not empty, it displays nothing. So to demonstrate that, I will add a simple text in the cell to represent the feedback. Watch how the conditional message disappears once the message is imputed and how it appears again once deleted. Let's have this conditional message formatted in red text and italics to make it stand out. Now, let's add a submit button, but before that, we will create the submit survey macro to handle the data submission. So open the VBA editor by going to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. Insert a new module by clicking insert, then model, and have this macro code pasted into the model. Close the VBA editor by clicking the hex in the top right corner. Now back in a survey form sheet, go to the developer tab again, click on insert, and select the button option under form controls. I will draw the button on the survey form sheet and name it submit. Make that bold. Right click on the button, select assign macro, choose the submit survey macro and click OK. To ensure that all macros work correctly when the workbook is reopened, you need to have it saved as a macro enabled workbook. So go to file, save as, in the save as type drop down menu, select excel macro workbook and click save. You can format this button further by right clicking and selecting format control. This is where you can change the color. For instance, I will go with red to make it stand out. You can also make it bold or increase the size here. Finally, let's clean up our form's appearance. Remove the grid lines by going to the page layout tab and on checking view under grid lines. I would also close up the form with a thick border. Next, we need a place to store all the survey responses. Let's set up a result sheet for this purpose. So add a new sheet by clicking the plus icon at the bottom of Excel. Rename this sheet to survey data. So right click the tab, select rename, and type survey data. In the survey data sheets, 
list the headers for the information you would like to collect. It's going to be the same headers as we have here. So starting from cell B1, I would type name in B1, age in C1, gender in D1, preferred contact method in E1, and feedback in F1. Let's have this formatted a bit. These headers will help us keep the data organized. Now, let's automate the data entry process using macros. This will allow us to transfer data with a single click on the submit button. But before we start recording a macro, it's essential to understand what a macro is. A macro is a series of commands and instructions that you group together as a single command to accomplish a task automatically. In Excel, macros are written in VBA that is Visual Basic for applications. But you don't need to write code manually for every task, especially a simple one like this. Excel can have your actions recorded and convert them into a macro. First, I will add some sample values to the survey form sheet to simulate user input. Have Neil selected from the drop-down list. For the preferred contact method, I would have both email and the phone checkbox selected. And for feedback, I would have this typed in, great events, looking forward to more. Now let's record the macro. Go to the developer tab, click on record macro, and a dialog box will appear. In the macro name field, type record submit actions, or any other name you can remember. You can also provide a description in the description box to remind yourself what this macro does and then click OK to start recording. Now that the macro is recording, follow these steps to demonstrate what you want the macro to automate. So select the cells containing the input data in the survey form sheet, that is C3, C5, C7, C9, and C11. Copy the selected cells by pressing Ctrl C on your keyboard or right-clicking and selecting Copy. Navigate to the survey data sheet when creating a data entry form, it's essential to ensure that each new role is added to the next available role in the data sheet. This prevents new data from overwriting existing entries. So to automate the process of finding the next empty role, we will use the VBA code within the submit survey macro we created earlier to find the next empty role in the survey data sheet. Here is the code snippet. Have the copied data pasted as values and transpose it to match the layout. So right click the selected cell B2 or the next row for you, choose paste special, select values, check the transpose box and click OK. Now return to the survey form sheet and clear only the input contents of cell C3, C5, C7, C9 and C11 to reset the form for the next entry while preserving the formula. You can do this by selecting the cells and using the clear content option. So right click and select clear contents instead of the delete key and then click the submit button to record this action in the macro. Now go back to the developer tab, click stop recording. This completes the macro recording process. I'm going to have an additional feature added to the survey form navigation buttons. You can add navigation buttons to review and modify previous entries. So I'm going to add two buttons, labeled, previous, and next on the form sheet. Go to the developer tab, click insert, and select the button option again under form controls. Draw your buttons below here and label them previous and next. We need the code for these buttons to work as expected. So open the VBA editor by going to the developer tab and click on Visual Basic. Have a new module inserted by clicking insert the module. I will copy this code into the new module. Save and close. Now back on the survey form sheet, we need to assign the created macro to the buttons. So right click the previous button, select assign macro, 
and choose the previous entry macro. Then click OK. Right click on the next button, select Assign Macro and choose the next entry macro. Then click OK. To ensure that the form starts at the last entry when the workbook is open, open the VBA editor again and find this workbook object. Double click on that and add this code. What's the purpose of this? The purpose of the initialize subroutine is to ensure that when the workbook is opened, the form survey form sheet automatically displays the last entry made. This improves user experience by immediately showing the most recent data imputed without requiring manual navigation. Even if the last entry was mistakenly deleted by the user before saving and closing the file, the initialize function will bring it back when the workbook is reopened. Let's save that and close the editor to go back to our worksheet. Now, let's demonstrate the entire process with additional sample data to ensure everything works as expected. So, I will add another participant's data, have Jane Smith for name, give it the age 34, have female selected from the drop down list, with both email and phone still checked, I will provide this feedback. Now, I will click the submit button to save this entry. Navigate to the survey data sheet to verify that Jane Smith's data has been correctly added below John Doe's data. Use the previous and the next buttons to navigate between John Doe's and Jane Smith's entries. Let's now clear the contents of the survey form sheet by selecting cells where users input their data, that is C3, C5, C7, C9, and C11, and press delete, save, and close. Then, we open the workbook to demonstrate the initialize function. With the workbook reopened, you can see that the form is displaying Jane Smith's entry confirming that the initialize function is working as expected even after the data was deleted in error. And that's it. If you found this tutorial helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next video.